Hi everybody and welcome to another discussion on the COVID-19 pandemic that we have across the world and specifically today about children and how the disease affects children. I'm Dr. Skolf Berger from Dr. Lukon Kohl and I'm really privileged to speak to Dr. Fiona Kritzinger. She's a pediatric pulmonologist at the Christian Bonnet Hospital. Welcome Fiona, really nice to see you today and to speak to you today. Yes, thank you very much and very welcome to everybody who else is listening. It's a pleasure to be here this morning to share some insights on the role of COVID in children. Yes, and thank you for taking some of your precious time to discuss this with us. And I think really, you know, just the, the fact that we can give clear information and not have fear and anxiety and discuss the role in children. And I think to start with, um, what is the likelihood of them getting infected and how serious is the disease in the children? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I think it's a very important question, obviously being a pediatrician and working with families and children every day, there is a lot of fear and anxiety. I think the good news that we can share today that we've learned from the pandemic uh, as it has developed in China and Europe and Italy and now in America is that the children definitely have a much milder illness than the adults. What we understand, however, is that children are as likely as adults to get infected. Mm. but the disease is much milder and therefore it can go unnoticed um, and they definitely have a role in transmitting the virus in the community and in the household. So from a illness point of view, um, those what we've learned through the data that's been published so far is that only about 50% of the children who presented had fever so fever is not necessarily needed to have COVID infection. Mm. The most other common symptoms was a sore throat was very common and a dry cough. Okay, so that's almost a little different than in the adults because in the adults there's a lot more fever and everyone is told about to look out for the fever. So in the children, you've got to look out for more mild symptoms, general, especially the sore throat. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely about 40 to 50% of kids may not have a significant fever. Okay. And obviously younger children can't complain of a sore throat. So that also makes it a bit difficult. So you may only see that they refusing to eat or refusing to drink rather than saying my throat is sore. Um, but interestingly enough, about 10% of them can also present with gastrointestinal symptoms. In other words, diarrhea or vomiting. Yes. But um, so generally speaking, same type of symptoms, but interestingly enough, not all of them have fever. And uh, obviously the other thing that the adults complain about is shortness of breath, which again can be difficult in an infant or a young child. They don't usually come to you and complain about that. So you may have to look at how they are breathing if they have labored or fast breathing. Yeah, that's, that's really very um, handy to know. So, so for the parent that's worried about their child, we've described the, little, the small children. What about the teenagers? What about your you know, 10, 12-year-old and older and the high school children symptoms-wise for them? Yeah, so the symptoms complex um, seem to be similar. Um, and the data, the way the data is presented, they've sort of grouped everybody less than 20 sort of in the same group. Okay. But what we can see is that as the age uh, increases, there is a slightly higher incidence. So currently in South Africa, if we look at the data, I think this morning's data suggests that about 10, uh, under the age of 10, there's about 2.5% of the cases is under the age of 10. Correct. And about 4% of the cases is between 11 and 20. Mm. So in terms of infection, it does seem like there's slightly more older children currently with the infection than the preschoolers. However, in terms of the risk for more severe symptoms, the data suggests that the younger you are, the more at risk you are. So in other words, children less than a year has a higher risk for more significant chest symptoms yes, yes, yes. than the school age child. Okay. So the school age child 
primary school age child and high school age child seems to be the most protected mm. from severe symptoms from all the people. Okay. Okay, so well, on that topic, so let's ex assume we're going to get to the lockdown period and there's going to be a partial lifting of the lockdown period and some of the children will be going back to school, advising the children and watching out for when they go back to school. I think the biggest challenge in the pediatric group, as I've, I've mentioned now before, I don't think, although everybody's very scared about what this virus means for my child, mm. in pediatrics, actually what you should be thinking is, how is my child going to affect the spread of the virus in the community? Because mm. like from the data, we reassure that children generally have very mild disease, which also means you can miss it. And you can underappreciate the symptoms, mm. but at the same time, the child is still infectious and this child can still spread the virus at school or in the household or in the family. So I think being very alert and being very careful is more about noticing when your child has these mild symptoms, they don't necessarily need any specific treatment. They don't necessarily need to see a doctor or go to the hospital. But the most important thing is they should not be going to school if they have these symptoms. They should stay at home mm. because they can spread the virus to other more vulnerable children at school. And the other thing is also that their symptoms, although mild, they can continue to shed the virus in the nasal secretions as well as in uh, fecal matter for up to two weeks. Yeah. So from the time of the start of your symptoms, for the next two weeks, you are still contagious and you can still spread the virus. So I think the most important thing is gonna be for parents to realize that if the child has mild symptoms, they can contact the hotline, they can have it confirmed, but that also means that child needs to stay at home mm. and isolate at home for the next two weeks. Yes, that is also important for the teachers because, you know, if the children don't stay at home and, and they've got mild disease and the teachers get ill, you've got to close the school. Exactly. And also, I think within families, you know, we are all, you know, we all can't wait to get together and see our grandparents and parents and siblings and, and nieces and nephews and cousins. Mm. But the reality is that we will have to still be very cautious. You know, the okay. recommendation, even if the lockdown lifts, it's still to continue with social distancing. It's still to avoid big gatherings and to be aware of those in the society that's vulnerable. So Absolutely. especially younger children visiting their grandparents with mild symptoms can become a big risk to the grandparents uh, if they fall ill. So I think those simple uh, reminders that although the children are, seem to be mostly protected, we need to understand their role mm. to be asymptomatic carriers and to continue to spread the virus to more vulnerable children that might have underlying diseases or the older part of the population that's more vulnerable. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. You know, so yeah, I think in, in, in summary, we, we um, basically looking at the fact that the schools will probably eventually open and we'll hopefully get the children there um, and they are not the high at risk ones but your risk of then spreading the disease more rapidly amongst the vulnerable population and especially our older population our grannies and, and grandfathers are very mm -hmm. high and we've got to I think maybe the responsibility lies with the parents to really um, help the children guiding them on, on how to deal with mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that, you know, so everybody has heard it before, but just to reiterate it, um, the basic hand hygiene principles. And I see more and more recommendations for wearing masks and especially also then for children, especially for those who have any kind of symptoms. But it also comes down to making a huge effort of teaching the children how to wear and use the mask appropriately. You know, I see lots of kids with masks hanging underneath or <laughs> the mask is too big for the child's face so it goes into their eyes so they keep pulling the mask down. So I think if you're using a mask, it's very important to make sure that it fits correctly mm -hmm. and that it still means that you should not touch the mask or the cloth part of the mask or your face 
without washing your hands firstly. And I think the schools will play a big role in that as well. Um, and they may have to make differences in, in the classroom in terms of how close children sit next to each other and, you know, group activities. And, and that's going to be an, an ongoing challenge for a while for us. Uh, Dr. Fiona Kretzinger, thank you very much for your time. I think it's been really informative. I think just to bring calm and clarity amongst parents and, and, and children for the, the next level we're entering um, with the end of the lockdown, hopefully um, around the corner. And then, yes, we will uh, definitely overcome this. No, for sure. No, definitely. And I think also just a reminder for the parents that, you know, the general um, pediatricians and the healthcare facilities are there. If they have any questions, if they're concerned, they can contact us. Uh, we welcome the interaction and we're always here to provide support and guidance. And also for that small group of children that may get unwell, uh, we are all prepared to support them and help them through this pandemic. Thank you very much for your time and have a, a great morning at work and hopefully not too many serious cases over there at Christian Barnard. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. That was Dr. Fiona Kretzinger, pediatric pulmonologist from Christian Barnard Hospital, and that really gave us some insights into what to expect. So remember, we will overcome this. Stay home. Stay safe and stay healthy.